Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, Skylum Software announced that they're going to be releasing Luminar AI on December 15th. Now, many of you know I've been working with a beta version of the application, and I've done several videos on it. What I want to do in today's video is I want to talk about those things that are in Luminar 4 that are still in Luminar AI, but they've either been moved to a different place in the application, or they have a new name. Because for those of you that pre-ordered Luminar AI, when you do get it on the 15th, you may have a hard time finding some of these things. Now, also, someone emailed me and they just asked me if I could do a conventional workflow on a landscape image using Luminar AI, meaning they didn't want me to use any of the AI tools if possible. They just wanted to see me move sliders so they could get a better feel of how the processing engine is in Luminar AI, and that's what we'll be doing as well. Now, let's start out with those things that are in Luminar 4 that are still in Luminar AI, but they either have a different name or in a different location. And we're gonna start out with Luminar Looks. Uh, looks are still here, they're just called templates. And they have their own little tab at the very top. So those are looks now, they're called templates. Now we're gonna jump over to the edit panel, and we're gonna talk about the Orton effect. Uh, you're probably familiar that Luminar 4 has the Orton effect in the Portraits tab. Well, it's moved over to the Creative tab, and it's under the Glow tab. So if we go to Glow, and we open that drop-down up, you'll see there's Orton effect and Orton effect Soft. So that's moved there. Also, staying in this Creative tab, let's talk about Split Toning. Split Toning's still here. It's just called Toning. Also, LUTs. LUTs is st are still here, but they're called Mood now. And uh, we'll jump over to the Professional tab, and we'll talk about Advanced Contrast. It's still here, it's now called Super Contrast. Uh, color Enhancer, Color Enhancer is still here, but it's called Color Harmony, all right? Now, Lens and Geometry, uh, you probably remember that's in the, like, the Canvas panel of Luminar 4. Well, it's kind of split up into two different uh, locations in Luminar AI. First of all, in the Professional panel, under Optics, You'll see this is the conventional, you know, correct your uh, lens distortions here. You can click those uh, checkboxes to uh, correct the distortion and or click advanced settings and then you could manually adjust uh, lens distortion and D-vignette and stuff there. Now the other part of um, lens and geometry, the geometry part, is over here in the essentials panel at the very top in composition AI. If you open that up, you can see all the transformation tools are down here. So that's been moved in again into two different areas. Now, as far as the composition AI tab that is in the essentials panel, that's the crop tool. So, you know, the crop tool had its own thing in Luminar 4. Well, now it's here. So you could crop and it's pretty much a conventional crop. You just have that additional button here to get an uh, artificial intelligence crop if you want it. Um, typically, I like to crop things on my own. I don't like to be suggested how to crop my image, but then again, I'm stubborn. Now, let's talk about one other thing that is still here, but it's not readily apparent. That's the histogram. Uh, you know, the histogram is usually hanging up here on the top right-hand panel somewhere. Well, now you have to, have to actually go and find it. And you go to View, and you go down here to the very bottom, Show Histogram. And you can see it's like this little overlay right here that you could barely see. Um, I kind of hope they change that because you'll see I'm going to process this image next and I'd like to use the histogram to get a white and black point. And, be, and by default, it's not here. Uh, so I'll have to always bring it up. And as you can see, it's kind of unobtrusive, but uh, you'll see. Let's, uh, let's just, all right, that's pretty much everything though that has been moved to a different area or has a different name. Let's process an image so without using AI. So I'm not going to use like enhance AI, structure AI, anything like that. So let's just go to the light tool first. And to do like a conventional kind of workflow, what I would do is I would jump down to shadows. I look at what, what my image needs most. And the shadows are kind of dark, right? So we'll, we'll open up the shadows, bring in the highlights, um, go to the whites and blacks. And this is where you'll need the histogram open to get a white and black point. Because you probably remember uh, with older versions of Luminar, at least on a Mac, I'm not sure this always worked on a PC. If you hold the Alter Option key in, you could get a white or black point. And I am holding in my um, Option key on my Mac. 
and it, you can see it's not doing anything. I'm not getting that um, totally black screen that you would get when you do it. And then as you start to move the white slider, you'd start to see some white bleed through so you could get that white point. Well, it doesn't do that, but you can do it with the histogram. With the histogram open, you either could click on the little triangle on the far right for highlights or on the far left. But instead, what you could do is hit the J key. So when you hit the J key, you can see that I'm clipping my highlights uh, right now, but it is a sunset. That is the sun there. So as I go up, you see I'm clipping more and more. So that's why you kind of need the histogram open to do that. If you hit the J key, at least in the beta version I'm using, if you hit the J key without the histogram being on the screen, it won't work. So you'll need the histogram there. Again, I'm working on a beta version. Maybe they'll change that when it's released. But as far as the white point for this image, I think that's fine. Uh, even though I'm clipping a little bit there, um, it is a sunset. So we'll go to the blacks and I'll move that to the left and pretty soon you'll see blue come in, right? So I'm starting to clip the blacks. So a little bit, maybe, maybe a little more. I think something like that's all right. Let's go up to super contrast. See what happens if I move this around. Um, I don't know. I think like that. I think it was looking a little too crispy down in the water and I think I took a little contrast away. It looks okay. Now, um, to get rid of that red and any blue that, I don't have any blue, but if I did, just hit the J key again and it gets rid of that. You could close down the histogram now if you'd like to. Um, but for tone, I guess that's okay. Um, now curves are down here. So if you want to use the tone curve, it's right there. In this case here, I don't think I'm going to use it. I am just going to mess around with the contrast a little more. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to reset that and I'm going to use that uh, super contrast uh, that is in the professional tab, but I'm not gonna get there quite yet. Now we're not gonna use the AI tools, right? We're gonna go right here to color. I'm gonna open up the HSL panel, uh, first of all, and I wanna go to luminance, and I want to make the blues just a little darker, and I wanna make the yellows a little brighter, and the oranges a little darker, uh, just kind of an arbitrary thing. Um, go to the saturation, and I'm gonna increase yellow a little bit, in orange a little bit, uh, like that. Um, greens, the trees in the back are awful dark. Um, let's go to luminance and see if that green helps those. Probably not. Yeah, I think we'll take care of that with super contrast maybe. Or maybe, I don't know, we'll jump back up to light. And maybe if I go to the shadows and just open up those shadows just a tad more. And bring that in just a little bit. I want a little more detail down in here. So, so far, so good. And although I don't often do it, what I'll do is I'll go back to color and I'll go to saturation. And I'll just bring saturation up a little bit. I don't often move the saturation or vibrant sliders too much. But for this image, I think I will. So, yeah, so far, so good. And by the way, I'm not cropping it. I like the composition out of camera. So I think that's fine as is. I'm not going to do anything there. I'm not going to convert it to black and white. We'll go to the details. And um, I like to start with large details and work my way up. So we'll move that to the right a little bit. Medium details. Kind of bring that down a little bit, that down a little bit. Sometimes it takes a second to render and then I'm way ahead of myself and it doesn't look right. It looks overly detailed. I think that's okay. Just a little bit. Um, sharpen the image slightly. I don't need to do any masking, I don't think. We're fine. Go to denoise. It was shot at very uh, low ISO, but I'll click on the image uh, to zoom in and wait for a second to render. I really don't see any noise at all. So I'll just move that up slightly. So that looks good. Wait for it to render. You can see it's a little bit blurry until it renders. This is a Sony RAW file. Um, it's pretty large. That's 61, 62 megapixel A7R4. So it's a little bit, uh, takes a little longer to render maybe. Um, we'll jump over to that professional tab and I mentioned that I think I might try to use uh, some super contrast here. Let's do the highlights, see what that looks like. And the midtones, shadows, Let that render. Kind of like that one. The shadows contrast is kind of bringing out this over here a little bit more. That's what I kind of wanted. So that looks pretty good. Um, color harmony, I don't think I need to do anything uh, necessarily. Brilliance, warmth. 
Oh, let's see if we make it a little warmer. It's a tiny bit cool. That's fine. Um, I kind of like split color one, but I talked about this many times uh, before. You can make the warm tones cooler if you want by moving that to the left or make those warm time tones even warmer. Here, I think that's fine. What I want to do is make those cool tones just a little bit warmer. Like that. I think let's do a before after. I'll hit the black backslash key or hold the backslash key of my keyboard in. There's before. There's after. Before or after. It's okay. It's not nothing that I, I think I'd fiddle with this a little more to tell you the honest to God truth because I'm not sure I actually like it. Um, there's just something about the tone that's not uh, sitting right with me at the moment. It's hard uh, to process an image and try to talk at the same time. Uh, sometimes it's just difficult to accomplish. Uh, but you get the idea, I think, of the processing engine that is in Luminar AI. Um, so I'll go put a vignette on here. Something like that. There we go. So let's call that a day. There's before and there's after. I think I actually could do a better job uh, when I'm not talking. It looks okay. Nothing I probably would share on Instagram or anything like this, but I'd work on it a little more. But I, hopefully that gives you an idea of the processing engine that is in Luminar AI. Uh, many times on an image like this, I will go to the Enhance AI and I will push that accent a little bit to the right just to see what happens, but I would do it earlier in the workflow. In this case here, I don't know if it's actually helping the image at all. But um, something like that, you get the idea. So again, uh, those of you that pre-ordered it, uh, this is finally has a ship date. It's coming December 15th for both Windows and Mac. If you didn't uh, pre-order it or you're interested in getting more information on it, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to it. I do have a discount code, but the discount code doesn't always work when stuff is on sale. And that's not just for Skylum. That's really for any of the uh, companies I'm affiliated with. A lot of times they disable discount codes when something's on sale. But I'll have the discount code listed below. Uh, you could give it a try and see if it works. Um, that's it. That's uh, Luminar AI about to be released December 15th. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>